But I yes. want to ask another question, and I'm going to ask this of Maria and of Phyllis, because I haven't really heard from the two of you. Um, what are you going to make, Maria, what are you going to make this, this um, COVID-19 about for you? Meaning in terms of how you think about it and, and what you want to draw from it. And I hope that's not too power packed of a question to ask you. Just... <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I have been struggling um, in the beginning of this, you know, people were talking about, oh, if you're not productive during this time, that just means you're lazy and, mm -hmm. and you're not focused um, mm -hmm. because now you have all the time in the world. And then I came across this really good article that was in psychology today that talked about it's okay to do nothing during this because oh, this right. is where we are. Right. right. And so, I, you know, I, I, I got into some back and forth with a couple of people and I shared the article for them and they're like, oh, wow, yeah, we didn't think of that, right? right? And so I've been going back and forth. I'm like, okay, I should be doing this, but there's some <laughs> things that I just, it, and, and there are days that are harder than others, right? Right, so right, right. Me, Sunday, I have a group of girlfriends and mm -hmm. we kind of, we have our little text chat and we also do our Zoom things and it, we're kind of good for each other, right? But on Sunday, Every time they text, it was on my nerves. I turned the noise off. They were on Zoom. I didn't want to talk to them. I just was like, I, right? <laughs> and I felt bad after. They were like, where were you? I said, yesterday wasn't a good day, so I tapped out. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, we're glad you tapped back in. I said, yeah, well, me too, but because you got to do something, right? You can't stay there. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's made me realize, number one, that that it's okay for me to get in that space for a minute, right? You mm -hmm. just can't stay there, though. But you, it's okay to be there for a moment. Also, one thing um, that, that kind of has bothered me, and I'm, I'm, I, I've started trying not to use the term and to get people not to use the term, and that's that term new normal, yeah. right? Because yeah. you hear it all over mm -hmm. the place. And where we are right now is not a good place necessarily, yeah. right? In terms of, of the anxiety that people are feeling and the outlook, you know, with, with people who are, who are passing and who are sick. And for someone to tell me this is my new normal, I don't want this to be my new normal, right? Mm -hmm. I want it to be better. And so when I hear new normal, to me, it signifies, okay, well, maybe you're not thinking about how to make this better. And, right. and, and, and let's build mm -hmm. hope in, 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 in our language, right? And, and our perspective. So I've been trying to get people to say, let's not talk about the new normal. This is just where we are right now. This is- I like people. that. This well, is where we are right now. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. I think you make a very good point. But what I will say to you is that um, so, as someone who has actually been in isolation, before um, having had cancer, uh, having uh, you know been immune compromised, having to live like the boy in the bubble for 40 days in isolation while undergoing a bone marrow transplant, or I should say a cord blood transplant, and then um, five months uh, in my house where people could not come and see me, I could only see mm -hmm. my mother my, and, and my husband. My son had to stand at a distance from me for fear that he might, uh, you know, might be carrying something that I would contract and possibly die. Um, mm -hmm. Someone who literally, like, and, and some of you may remember, was about mm -hmm. four or five shades darker than I am. Like, my skin was a completely different color. I was bald. The only way I recognized myself was by seeing my eyes, seeing myself through my eyes. I had to get to a place where if that was my new normal, that was okay because it was my life going forward and I had to embrace whatever that may, mm -hmm. may have been. Now, I mean, that's how I cook, right? Mm -hmm. So my point in saying all this is that I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. I, I believe it's going to look very different than it did, you know, three months ago. Okay. I don't know what two months from now is going to look like, mm -hmm. but I'm going to live into that yes. and embrace whatever that is and find the positive right, in right, right, it. Right, so we've right, got right. people back to what was. But new adaptability. Hey, but if I look yeah. forward to it with a different kind of not a negativity. Right. 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 You were saying right. something a little so, different. So, I think, so right? yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. I think I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I'm talking about the language, right? Because when right. You, every time you hear new normal, listen to the news. Yeah. New normal. This is going to be our new normal. People have to get used to doing this. They have to get used to that. And yeah. and but in the context of all of more negative than than positive. And so my phrase is: mm -hmm. if this is the way we're going to move forward, then we'll move forward that way. But let's present it in a way mm -hmm. that's not mm -hmm. as as hopeless or as as depressing right. or as it. it 
or as um, what's the word? Out of control. Pessimistic. Out of control. Yeah, yeah. 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 Although there, is. there is some aspect of, I guess, in some ways, that people are grieving certain things that they are losing, and mm -hmm. so the sense of the new normal, meaning that, like, okay, this was before and this is now and i'm not saying that i i do agree with what you're saying in that sense and i think it's the sense of also allowing people to not necessarily presume that it will go back right so right. It's, i mean all of this is language i mean i was an yeah. english major so Colette, what about breakdown breakthrough meaning you know I, meaning I, breakdown I, breakthrough phyllis we haven't heard from you yeah, and phyllis. i wanted to get you in because you've been definitely listening but i want to know what 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 are you making from all of this? What, what are you making this about for you? As you say, breakdown, breakthrough, and, and we even think about new normal. I think about this as being the valley. We're in the valley. And mm -hmm. I, I put that, uh, you know how active I am. And I am all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> yes. when this, you just haven't <laughs> seen it. You haven't seen it, guys. And when <laughs> this started, it was like full stop. And that full stop was anything but comfortable for me. It was like, um, I, I don't even know. I went from the extreme of feeling, uh, I'm, in, I'm caught. How am I going to get out of this court? To the point of feeling extremely sad and depressed and didn't realize it. And uh, it took a lot of the practices that I had before, the meditation, uh, praying, um, to come to the point where I recognize you are in the valley. There's space, there's place in the valley to learn. Very yeah, often, no, I walk through the valley. Yeah. Very often. <laughs> Wasn't there a book called The Valley? Yeah. Called the valley? There's a psalm, the like 23rd that. psalm. <laughs> yeah, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of right. death. Right? right? You don't yeah. stay yeah. in the valley. Fear no evil, for thou it's art it. with me. But go it's ahead, Phyllis. We're right? talking about a process, really. The valley of the dolls. Yes. <laughs> and when we're in that valley, very often, when we find ourselves in that valley, we're fighting to get out mm -hmm. of the valley. And that's what I felt myself doing, fighting to get. And all of a sudden I got very calm in that valley. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the valley is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. The valley is yes. an opportunity that I wouldn't have had if I was just running, not all that running and doing, mm -hmm. and not, maybe not as much being. So the valley is my opportunity to be. Mm -hmm. and so I've used yes. this time to be. Mm -hmm. And in terms, I think it was Maria that said, not doing anything. Oh, but you are doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yes. I am, may not be doing what I did before, but being still, going for my walks, mm -hmm. meditating. And it's interesting. I think I even mentioned this to you all before. Mm -hmm. I realized that I prayer didn't come for me the way it was before. I had to live into being what prayer showed up for me as music. So now I listen to my music. It, I don't spend as much time sitting and writing as I used to. I used to have a, a, a method of every the day, journaling. my writing right. and my journaling. Um, I do journal, but I journal at this particular time in my life, I'm not journaling as much. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's part of the being. I, I can only say that, but I'm going with my spirit mm -hmm. and I am very hopeful, not only for myself and for all of you, but I'm hopeful for this world because mm -hmm. I believe that mm -hmm. we are in the valley and we, and enough of us are experiencing what I'm experiencing and going with our hearts. And I'm praying that when we come out of this valley, we're going to be so much better. That was beautiful. That. Denise, yeah. I want to hear about how you are <laughs> amplifying your spiritual life because you were talking about that, how you have been looking at how you've been living or how you've been thinking and, and what changes you see that you want to make internally. Do you want us to share any of that process with us? I am just really focusing you, on, <laughs> on what I can give, you know, whether it's my time, whether it's as much as I can financially, I, I, I just feel that I have to, 
I don't feel it's a burden. I think it's an awakening. And I also am more sensitive to the people around me um, as well as the need. It's as if I'm hearing things. I'm picking up vibes. I guess that's the right way to put it. Vibes, and, yes. And, mm -hmm. and I'm being very open about receiving whatever message I'm getting. And it's, it's not all good. Some, some of it may be, you know, painful or, or uncertain. But I think the approach is I'm open. And, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make the positive changes that I feel I need to do for myself. And at the same time, I'm very much involved in my work. I am fortunate enough that I could do most of it remotely. And I've been really caught up in all these SBA PPP loans that are coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So I feel that I am very, very much involved and hands-on with making the businesses that I am being trusted with I am trying to do the best for them and going out of my way to make sure that those loans are processed to the extent that I can control it. Um, I'm working with higher ed. That's my, my field of expertise right now. And I'm concerned. I'm concerned about education. I'm concerned about the young people that are graduating, that are seniors this year mm -hmm. going, you know, what will be their choices? How are they going to sustain you know, their education, uh, if colleges don't open up, um, I, I see that they're, that the whole world is changing and that it's a, a big leap forward for all of us and that this is the time that we should be reaching out to help everyone and whoever, whether it's your neighbor, whether it's a stranger, whether it's volunteering, I think this is it. I, you know, I, I call it like Mother Earth giving us a, a second yeah. chance yeah, yeah. Yeah, type yes. of thing. So, um, and for Jennifer, I was very interested in um, the higher ed component, education, uh, if that's all part of the new New York, you know, for, you know, that um, we are focusing on in, in sustaining that and, and maybe bringing it to a new level where we're opening it up and providing free education for all these immigrants or people of color who can't otherwise go. And now, if they don't have a job, how are they going to pay for that tuition? Right. So I'll just right. come in and say that the vision is being cast, right? Mm -hmm. And to be self-sufficient uh, and to have economic, you know, upward mobility and opportunity in America, we know that education factors in uh, very significantly. And so we do have to look at education, not just higher ed, though. We need to look at, you oh, know, inequality right. in education from the very beginning. We live in yeah. a nation where we live in a city, uh, in a nation and in a city in particular, where where you go to for pre-kindergarten determines, you know, how <laughs> what college you're going to. Yeah, that's what college you go. School education, <laughs> where you go to yeah, elementary school determines where you're going to middle school and where you go to middle school determines where you're going to high school and where you're going to high school determines where you go to college and so on and so forth, right? And so it's not just higher ed. It's from the very beginnings. It's from the in mm -hmm. utero experience, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Going back to infant maternal mortality yes. and the disparities that exist there and how we engage with black and brown communities around that. Are we giving children the best start from the earliest points? Mm -hmm. So yes, education is a big part. And to share privilege, 